this is CIT 226 data integrity and security and we are covering database security in our previous lecture we talked about OLAP and DSS which is online uh, transaction processing or decision support systems uh, now we'll talk about database management systems applications that provide means to manipulate analyze and query we covered it a little bit last time and almost all DBMS exists today are developed to use with the relational database known as the databases or database management systems where we have relationships where we have uh, all the parent to child uh, relationship between the tables we have primary key foreign keys and we are even able to store the data in form of audio files uh, images and video files etc focuses on this text for example Oracle MySQL and SQL Server because these are the most common database management systems which you see out there in the market now MySQL is not used by enterprises it's only used for online transaction processing or online databases if we talk about the databases to be used within an organization it should be either SQL Server or uh, it's Oracle because most of the enterprise resource planning systems are linked to those. Now Oracle was developed by Oracle Corporation in late 1970s, remains a popular database server. Advantage is it's portable, can run on almost any operating system and dominate the role in providing the business solutions because it's a database management system plus they have their own Oracle suite which is an e-business solution for enterprise resource planning. Now current version addressed is uh, in the text uh, when this book was released was 11G but now of course uh, we'll have the higher versions of it. Now MySQL is RDBMS developed by Sun Microsystems. Now Sun is quite famous having their own um, hardware for the server operating systems and most popular often uh, open source database server today is MySQL. Now it has different advantages first of all you don't have to pay for anything because it's open source. Anyone can install it, it works on cross-platform, cross you can install it on Linux, you can install it on Windows, you can install it on other operating systems as well, can be customized and platform independent regardless where you are installing it and there is a lot of help available for it online different forums are there if you're stuck somewhere you can post a message in a forum and you'll get a very fast response on it now microsoft sql server is of course from sql uh, from microsoft it's not free often referred to as sql server rdbms developed by microsoft primary uh, query languages for example tsql or ncsql disadvantage advantages are scalability meets need of any windows environment that's the problem it has that it is meant for windows environment only now database similarities is read consistency that's how it's reading the data refers to the accuracy and reliability of data within a database what's the point of a database if it cannot maintain the reliability and integrity of the data that's the far most important thing when we are saving the data and that's what we talked about last time when we were talking about uh, locking the raw data when it is being saved by one user it should not be changed by the other user unless the lock is removed that's why you might have seen if you open um, the access database on your computer as well as soon as you open the access database there is a temporary file appearing on your desktop with a lock file it means that the database is active open and someone is using it depends on the database of um, ability to process and commit the transactions in a timely manner now there is a difference between processing and committing processing is just the changes commit is to save to make the changes permanent on a database just like on a switches on Cisco switches whenever we make the changes then we commit the changes to save them in the memory so that if the uh, uh, router would restart it would keep the changes but if the changes are made but not committed and you will restart the router the changes are gone it means that you can check the settings without saving it if you are happy with it commit it 
If you're not happy, leave it. Depends on the database ability to process and commit the transactions in a timely manner. Applies the following locking mechanism. Transactions locking, concurrency locking, logs and commit plus undo. So you can make the changes and then revert them. Now query management is steps taken by a database management application to process a user query. Query is any set of information or the records which you want to pull from the database by writing a small code. The syntax of writing a query is quite simple. Too complex depends what you are trying to do. When we talk about complex queries, we are talking about inner join and outer join and then uh, joining them together. Now parsing, analyzing the query construction for the correct syntax and semantics, optimizing a process of locating most efficient way to retrieve the requested data. Now if you want to run a query and you have a pattern in your mind, you can write it yourself easily. If not, you can find plenty of information on the internet where all sort of examples are there which would help you in getting the information. Now, the queries can be processed individually or in parallel. It's not necessary that it would go in a sequence. It can be processed individually or it could run all together. Now, instance refer to the background process and the structured memory used during the interaction with the database. So there will be a memory utilization and some data will be stored in the memory of it. To create users must connect to the database and establish a connection. So if I want to uh, make some changes to my database, so I will have a client installed on my computer and there will be an actual database installed somewhere else on a server. I'll have a client on my computer. I'll enter the IP address of the server, my username and password, and only then I'll connect to the remote database. And then I'll be making the changes there. Now database portion of a Oracle server holds database files that environment needs to run the Oracle database. Files help configure the instant processes of SQL and executes and ensures and alerts the recovery from the software or hardware failure. Now my SQL architecture is developed by multi-platform to use on Sun Solaris, Linux, or Windows, any operating system. Architecture components common to these operating systems, for example, database connection manager, query manager, transaction manager, storage engine, it is the same regardless of which operating system you are using. Manage the connections to the MySQL server virtually, any client may connect. So if you are coming from a Windows machine, or you are coming from a Linux machine or from a Sun, you will be able to connect to MySQL server. Method for clients to connect is via connection manager layer, application programming interface, which is a code or a piece of uh, a piece of code which is embedded in an application, the application that you have developed, and through those APIs you'll be able to connect it in order to extract the data without being connected physically, not physically and without being connected with your interaction. You'll write a piece of code, you'll write an API to for example fetch the data whenever there is a change on the main database. So it would replicate the changes on your computer. Many programming languages are supported, client using ODBC, Java.NET supported, TCP IP is most common type of the connection through which we access the database because wherever this my SQL database will be installed, of course it would have an IP address and you will reach it through the IP address. Execution running independently from the other processes, then we have a query engine in this one architecture component that optimizes and manages the query in SQL statement. So it would have the same SQL statements similar which you use on Oracle or on SQL server with minor modifications here and there but you can easily get used to it. Build to use resources efficiency, query steps are user initiates the query, query request received by the MySQL server, then the query parser creates a tree-like structure to extract the SQL statements, data definition language provides the access and memory cache stores the recently requested queries in it. Now the transaction manager in a MySQL transaction group of a SQL queries treated as a single process. Transaction manager maintains the concurrency throughout the database and ensures the simultaneously data handling 
with no corrupt data. So if two guys are writing to the same piece of information on a database, it would be saved. It's not like two guys are trying to write it at the same time. So there will be a clash and the data would be wasted. Type of a database environment are either transactional or non-transactional. MySQL stores the data files in secondary storage dynamically traversing files is too slow. Storage management processes of storing and retrieving the data throughout the database. Most work takes place within the main memory of it where it's residing and it's executing. Three tiered process uses the resources manager, buffer manager and storage manager. The storage engine is the component that read and write the data to and from the database. So it would maintain the information, whatever queries you are sending it to the database, it would read it, it would process it and then the changes would be committed in the database. Customized options are available. For example, the administrators can choose which storage engine to use for certain tables. Now there are different type of storage engines which are available. By default is my ISAM. Now that is a default used by all databases. INNODB is a commonly used for online transaction processes and as I told you it can take up to 256 terabyte of data. The data which is in the memory is the data which would be stored on the database over a longer period of time. Then we have archived, it would be saved and then the federated and comma separated values which are the CSV files in your Excel or black hole engine and the Falcon engine etc. Just like you have Firebird when you use the Google uh, applications or for application development etc. Now the clients connect to the server using the tabular data stream. Main components of a SQL server DBMS is the architecture. The relational engine is responsible for query processing and data retrieval. Now the storage engine manages the memory, recovery, logging and transactions etc. Now we have threads and processes, threads and fibers used to perform several tasks simultaneously. So that one database is there, lots of users have their own tables related to their departments stored on the same database. Now it's receiving queries and data from everywhere. Now the functionality of a database server is in a robust nature that it, regardless of how much data it's receiving, it is saving on it and making sure that the data goes in a specific table and the fields which are related to your department. Threads handle the operating system and allocated one per CPU, fiber handles the server and allocated one per user command and the worker process pools of either threads and fibers for all the users and connections and the number of threads and fibers within your worker process available depends on the network size. It's just like the threads that you have on a CPU and how many cores are there. So it would segregate the data and it would send it accordingly. So that brings us to the end of the chapter.